الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومطاعنا محمد عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الاخر وذكر الله كثيرا صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن احدكم حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم respected ulama ikram elders beloved brothers in islam as we are well aware we are drawing currently it is the month of safar and we are drawing inexorably towards the month of rabiul awwal generally in our masajid we find that there is a fervor of expectation with regards to this month we'll see already many pamphlets many invitations sira majlis sira programs detailed descriptions of what a great favor and benefit it was that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the entire humanity and particularly this ummah with the coming of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam The verse of the Quran which I recited in the beginning Quran is what we call a limitless ocean Quran is the mazhara is the display of Allah's very very great love and compassion for the ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam quran is a living miracle and it is our aqeeda and belief that quran is the sifat and quality of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and like like allah is limitless allah's sifat and attributes are limitless quran is kalamullah the sifat and quality of allah therefore the knowledge the wisdom that is contained in the quran is limitless however there are certain verses in the quran like sometimes when something is so vast that it's impossible in reality to fully and truly comprehend it then we have this kahawat sometimes it's said to somebody that by सब कुछ मालूम नहीं तो सब भूल जाओ कोई मसला नहीं लेकिन ये एक चीज याद रखना वट दिस एक्सप्रेशन मीन्स दैट इफ यू कान प्रैक्टिस ऑन एवरी थिंग डोंट लूज आउट ऑन दिस थिंग इन अदर वर्ड सर्टन थिंग्स आर हाई लाइटेड अमंग्स द ओशन लिमिटलेस ओशन ऑफ द कुरआन दे आर सर्टन वर्सेज दैट द मुफसरीन ओलमाई के राम हैव हाई लाइटेड that okay you find 6600 plus minus verses too many too much then don't lose sight of these particular verses and amongst them is this verse where allah taala begins with emphasis upon emphasis la qad lam is emphasis qad emphasis in other words without a doubt this is an absolute certainty and then kana is past tense in other words set in stone another 
level of emphasis. لا قد كان لكم في رسول الله without a doubt, without a doubt, definitely. This is set in stone. This is decreed that whether you lived in the Camel Age or Space Age or Rocket Age, whether it was 14 centuries ago, whether it was now, whichever part of the world you may hail from, for you in the Rasul of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Uswa, Uswa is Qudwa. In other words, a symbol, a role model, a guide. What is very, very interesting, and I mentioned this before, we are living in a superficial world today. People want to be beautiful. Almost any street you pass, there are items being sold, there is advertising taking place. Behind it, this industry which is worth billions upon billions upon billions. What industry? Industry to make people attractive, make them beautiful, cosmetic industry, plastic surgery, the list goes on. We are well aware of it. Every time you pass by a mirror, people are preening, admiring themselves. There is this constant drive in our masturat to make themselves more attractive than what they actually are. Men today also, men also, they want grooming themselves. The hair must be right, the face must be right, the skin color must be right, the appearance must be right. Allah has designed this human being such that illa mashallah, generally there is this drive amongst human beings Make yourself attractive and beautiful. Beauty, one is what we call superficial, outward beauty. The other that Quran and Hadith places emphasis upon. Your outward appearance, مَا كَانَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَى وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ مَا كَانَ لَكُمُ لَكُمُ الْخِيَرَى Allah created you and I. Allah created you and I and so far as your outward appearance, whether you are tall or short or fair or dark skin, or whether you have whatever color eyes or whatever color hair, the reality Yakhtar, Allah chose, Allah decided, Ma kana lakumul khiyara. None of us was consulted, it is only Allah's decision. So, how you look outwardly, your superficial appearance, that is not in your control. Allah decided that, Allah decreed that, Allah exhibited that. So, this drive to make your outward appear more beautiful than what it is in reality is illogical. You and I have been given ikhtiyar and choice in what? In what we call the real beauty, not superficial external beauty, internal beauty. Mafum of the riwayat, Ya Ibn Adam, Allah calls out, O Ibn Adam, O humanity, Kam tatazayyana lin nas, how much effort are you making to make yourself beautiful in the eyes of people? Fahal tazayyanta li ajli? فَهَلْ تَزَيَّنْتَ لِأَجْلِي Why don't you make yourself, why don't you make this effort to make yourself beautiful in the eyes of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Beauty is not superficial external beauty. Beauty is when the inside becomes beautiful. Become a beautiful human being. Become a source of zenith and attraction in your character, in your demeanor, in your mannerism. Allah Ta'ala, when the Qur'an highlights for you without a doubt in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Uswa, a role model, an example, what is the word that Qur'an uses? Very often when we translate 
this verse or you'll hear in some gathering for you in the Rasul of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most perfect example. Without a doubt, technically, that statement is absolutely correct. But the Arabic word for perfection, culmination, completion is kamila. Allah Ta'ala does not say, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ kamila. For you in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most perfect example. He was perfection, no doubt. In every aspect, he was perfection. When it comes to nubuwat, mathali wa mathalul anbiya min qabli, kamathali rajulin bana baytan fa ahsanahu wa ajmalahu. He said, My example. And the example of the Anbiya Ali Musalatu Wasalam that preceded me is the example of a person who built a beautiful home. Ahsanahu wa ajmalahu. Beautified it. It was attractive. Beautiful palace. However, in one corner, this beautiful palace was left incomplete. Fajalan nas, ya'jabuna bihi, wa yatufuna bihi. People started. Walking around it, admiring it, looking at it. And they said, how beautiful this home would be if only it was complete. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu said, أَنَا اللَّبِنَةُ الْأَخِيرَةُ وَأَنَا آخِرُ النَّبِيِّينَ لَا نَبِيَّ بَعْدِي وَلَا أُمَّةَ بَعْدَ أُمَّتِي He said, I, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, am the completion, the perfection, the culmination of the home of Nubuwat. After me, no Nabi is to come. Nubuwat Kamila was completed upon him. Deen, Deen, in Hajjatul Wada, after Asr Salah, Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is on his camel Adba. Jibreel comes with the verses of the Quran. Al Yoma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum, Wa Atmamtu Alaykum Ni'mati, Wa Raditu Lakum Al Islam Adina. Today, I have completed my Deen upon you. I have perfected my favor upon you. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ And I have chosen deen islam is your religion. Deen reached kamal, culmination, perfection upon him. Akhlaq, character, culmination, perfection upon him. He was the very epitome of kamal, perfection, completion, culmination. So, no one would have objected. If Allah said in this verse, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ كَامِلًا For you in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most complete and perfect example. But Quran does not say kamila. What does Quran say? Quran says, أُسْوَةٌ hasana. For you in the Rasul of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most beautiful example. The whole world is running towards beauty. Commercial industry, cosmetic industry, millions and billions of dollars being spent. This stupendous, stupendous drive, this stupendous intoxication with beauty, beauty, beauty. Allah highlights what is true beauty. Beauty, uswatun hasana. Beauty is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Outwardly, Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Wa ahsana minka lam taraqat tu'ayni. Wa ajmala minka lam talidin nisa'u. Khuliqata mubarra'am min kulli aibi. Ka'annaka qad khuliqata kama tasha'u. He says, more magnificent than you my eyes have never seen. More beautiful than you, no woman has ever given birth to a tra- child. خُلِقْتَ مُبَرَّأَمْ مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْبِ Outwardly, Ya Rasulullah, your appearance is such. خُلِقْتَ مُبَرَّأَمْ مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْبِ You have been created free from every blemish. كَأَنَّكَ قَدْ خُلِقْتَ كَمَا تَشَاءُ Poetic gesture. What does he say? It appears to me, Ya Rasulullah, as if you told Allah how to create you and on your desires Allah created you. 
ابو حریرا ما رأیت شیئن احسن من رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کان شمس تجری فی وجہی و اذا ضحک یتلعلو فی الجدر he says I have never seen anything more beautiful and magnificent than محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کان شمس تجری فی وجہی he says it appears as if the sun would shine from the face of محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و اذا ضحک یتلعلو فی الجدر and when my نبی would smile the نور of his smile could be seen on the wall in front of him. Barraqat thanaya. Ulama say that his teeth, when his teeth would become visible, they would glitter. A shine would come from the teeth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ummi Ma'bad Khuzai radiallahu ta'ala anu. It's not the topic now, I know it, nor do we have much time, but very, very briefly, that elderly woman in the desert, this kafla was traveling. رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ عامر بن فہیرہ اور عبداللہ بن عریقت فور پیپل ہجرت اس ٹیکنگ پلیس دے رن آؤٹ آف پروویزنز اپروچ دس الڈلی وومن شی پوائنٹس تو ایک گوٹ دیت ہیز پاس ایک ایکسپائیڈ ایج دیزن ہیو دیزن نوٹ ایبل تو بیر ملک اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیکس پرمیشن ایم کٹنگ دی انسیڈن شورٹ places his Mubarak hands on the others of that goat, what happens on its teeth? One bucket, second bucket, third bucket fills up. All of them drink, third bucket he gives it back to Umm Ma'bad Khuzai radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Muarikhin have written, historians have written, average lifespan of a goat or a sheep, seven years. This goat, exposed to the hand of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, historians record, lived for 21 years. Passed away in the Khilafat of Sayyidina Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Such barakah, such blessings. Brief interaction, elderly woman, dihati, Arab, desert dweller, didn't go to any school or university. The nur of nubuwat strikes her heart. Look at the description. This is external, leave the internal. External, ra'aytu rajulan, zahir al-wada'a, ablaj al-wajh, khasan al-khalq. لَمْ تُعِبْهُ ثَجْلَ لَمْ تُزْرِبِهِ سُعْلَ I saw a man striking appearance radiant beauty beautifully created وَسِيمٌ قَسِيمٌ the more you looked at him the more your eyes wanted to look at him from whichever direction you looked at him it was beauty and perfection there's no easy way to translate the terminology in this hadith. One beautiful translation, one alim gives, رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا ظَاهِرَ الْوَضَعَ I saw the 14th full moon in a human form in front of me. حَسَنَ الْخَلْ Beautifully created. His belly was not protruding. His face was not disproportionately small. لم يكن بالمطخم ولا بالمكلثم وكان في وجهه تدوير. The face of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. وسيم قسيم. His beauty was not like the beauty of others. Something is very beautiful. You look one time, second time, third time. Eventually, the beauty dissipates. The beauty of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was unique. Each time you looked, you wanted to look more. And as you looked more, he became even more and more beautiful. Wasimun Qasim. Fi aynayhi da'aj. Fi ashwarihi wataf. Fi sawtihi sahal. Fi unuqihi sata'. Fi lihiyatihi kathafa. Azajjun akran. In sakata, fa'alahu al-waqar. Wa in takallama, fa'alahu al-baha. حلو المنطق فصل لا نذر ولا هذر كأن منطقه خرزات نظم يتحدرنا like I said is not the occasion and now there's no time also but such a description this woman gives there was a the whiteness of his eyes were extremely white the pupils were extremely dark there was a streak of red, red lines in the whiteness of his eyes. His eyelashes were beautifully long. Eyebrows were arced. They would not meet in the, in the, in the middle. In the middle there was a gap. Azadjul khawajib baynahuma irqun yudirruhul ghadab. When he would become upset, this vein between the eyebrows would start protruding. 
His neck was elegantly long. There was a lyrical intonation to his mode of expression. Beautiful logic in every expression. He would not speak inordinately long, nor would he speak short. It would be brief, but it would be concise. The words as they left his mouth were like pearls that were being scattered. When he was silent, reverence overpowered him, covered him. And when he spoke, awe and majesty protruded from him. أَحْسَنُ النَّاسِ وَأَبْهَاهُمْ مِنْ بَعِيدٍ أَحْسَنُهُمْ وَأَجْمَلُهُمْ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ From far, you would be overawed. As you would become closer, as you would come closer, his beauty would overtake you. Like Ali radiallahu ta'ala described this, مَنْ رَآهُ بَدِيهَةً هَابَهُ وَمَنْ خَالَتَهُ مَعْرِفَةً أَخَبَّهُ يَقُولُ نَائِتُهُ لَمْ أَرَ قَبْلَهُ وَلَا بَعْدَهُ مِثْلَهُ If you came upon him suddenly, such was his beauty, it would overpower you. His Jalal, his Heba, his Azmat, you would be overawed. And as you interacted with him, then his love would overtake your heart. And the one who would describe him would say, before this and after this, I have never seen anything more beautiful than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uswatun hasana. Allah says for you, in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the most, not perfect. Like I said, perfection would be an appropriate translation or appropriate choice of word. But what does Quran say? Uswatun hasana, most beautiful. Why? Why? Because through Quran, through Hadith, you and I are being taught you want to become beautiful. You want to become attractive. Offer somebody today, offer somebody today, spend millions or billions if you have the means, become more attractive, become more beautiful. We are ready to spend stupendous amounts of money. The cosmetic industry, the advertising, so-called superficial beauty industry of this world is a living proof of that. Human beings want to become beautiful, but know and understand the parameter and standard of true beauty is nothing, nothing but Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ulama go on, they explain why beautiful, why beautiful, why not perfect? Why does Allah say uswatun hasana? Because beauty attracts. Like I said, Rabiul Awal is coming, Sira Jalsa, this gathering, that gathering. My respected brothers, speaking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, extolling his praises, this is virtuous, this is beneficial. Developing his love, sending salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all that is in its place. The problem that is facing you and I, look around us today. Brother is not talking to brother. Relative not talking to relative. More often than not, when you see somebody, instead of getting happy and wanting to go close to him, he's coming from one direction, you want to go into the next direction. Pick up the social media, somebody is making ghibat about somebody. Somebody is running down the next person, finding faults on the next person, picking on the next person. As an ummah today, we have become a fragmented, acidic society. Each one is out to get the next person. Each one is looking for the faults of the next person. Muhabbat, jor, mutual harmony. In reality, this has become non-existent illa mashallah in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the fact of the matter, on an international scale, on an international scale, I am sitting on the mimbal, of the masjid and I'm prepared to take not one qasam, thousand qasams. Today this ummah is being harmed and hurt. This ummah is being tortured and persecuted. The blood of this ummah is flowing freely. However, however, kan kokar sun lena. Listen with the ears of Iman. Listen with the ears of Iman. Blame America, blame Russia, blame the superpowers, blame the Jews, blame the Christians, blame whoever you want. The reality is the blame to a very large extent lies with us. Muslims are hurting Muslims more than the non-Muslims are hurting us. 
Look at the international scale. Look on a local scale. Look within ourselves. Where is the jor? Where is the muhabbat? Where is the love? Where is the tolerance? Where is the desire to forgive one another? We have become a fractured ummah. We have become a broken up ummah. And the sad irony, the sad irony is when you look at the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa When you look at what Quran tells us is uswatun hasana, beautiful example, beautiful human being, externally, internally. When you look at that, there is absolutely no justification whatsoever for the mutual hatred, dislike and disharmony that has overtaken us. Have 1000 sira jalsas, talk till the cows come home, extol his praises. But until you and I do not make this determination, until you and I do not make this determination, that from inside, I want to emulate his example. Till that time, till that time, whatever praises we are extolling, like I said, it is beneficial in its place. The reality is it will be hypocrisy. Uswatun hasana, imbibe that example. Bring it within ourselves. I'm going to mention, like I said, occasion of Juma time is very limited. I'm going to mention just one or two incidents. Not so that it is stories, nothing new, we would have heard it before. The need and the requirement now is for us to take a thermometer and see how much we have brought that in our lives. We are employing people, Muslim, non-Muslim. We are married, we are husbands, we are fathers. We are lawyers, doctors, engineers, farmers. Whatever role we have adorned, the criteria, am I a beautiful father? Am I a beautiful doctor? I am, am I a beautiful lawyer? Am I a beautiful husband? Am I a beautiful Muslim? Am I, am I a beautiful ambassador of Islam? Because beauty attracts. Beauty attracts and beauty does not demand proof. Someone tells you, the moon, 14th full moon is beautiful. You ask him, where's the proof? He'll ask you whether you lost your marbles. What proof are you looking for? There's the beauty in front of you. As Muslims, the non-Muslims looking at us, whether it's the Jews or the Christians or the superpowers, whoever, looking at us, they were supposed to be attracted, not filled with hatred. They were supposed to desire to become like us. When, when, when you and I become in reality Uswatun Hasana, the beautiful example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One incident. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is walking in Medina. With him Ghaliban is Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Someone comes perplexed, worried. Ya Rasulullah, there's a problem. What has happened? I'm cutting the incident short. Like I said, time is limited. He says to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I gave da'wat of Islam to my people. I told them, when you accept Islam, your wealth will increase. Barakat and blessings will come. Conversely, Allah's design, Allah is testing my people. There is drought. Animals are dying. I fear on the basis of greed, they accepted Islam. They are new Muslims. I fear that now out of greed, they will leave Islam. Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says there is nothing in the Baytul Mal. One person overhears this conversation, approaches, he's a Jew of Medina. He says to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm prepared to advance you 80, call it sa or tons or whatever of dates. They fix a time and a period for repayment. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to this person, take these 80 tons of dates, spend it on your people, spend it on your people, be generous towards them. Time was set for repayment. This person approaches early. The date hasn't yet arrived. Allah's Rasul is surrounded by the stars of humanity. Abu Bakr, Umar, eminent Sahaba walks now. Like I said, time is limited. Visualize this. This man walks up to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi is surrounded by his people. He's in a position of authority and power. This man walks up, grabs hold of his collar, pulls it and harshly with arrogance addresses him. 
This is not literal. This is just the crux of what he said. I'm not going to go into literal. That Muhammad, just like your grandfather and your father were rogues and they never paid back their debts, it appears you are just the same. The reaction and the effect of this. This man says, I looked up, I looked at the face of Umar. Umar, aynahu tadurani fi wajhi kal falakil mustadir. He says the eyeballs of Umar were roving around his eyes, furiously angry. Got hold of his sword already. Sahaba, this was that Jamaat. When they would address Rasulullah wasallam, they would say, May our parents be sacrificed upon you in front of them. The Nabi of Allah is being insulted like this. And that too, no justification. The time is not yet due. Allahu Akbar. What is the reaction? What would your and my reaction be? Uswatun Hasana. Uswatun Hasana. Uswatun Hasana. Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smiles. Turns to Umar first. And says, Umar, Ana wa huwa akhwaju ila ghayri hadha minka ya Umar. Umar, your devotion to me should have demanded that you behave differently. We are in greater need of not anger from you, Umar. We are not in need of anger from you, Umar. What you should have done, ta'muruni bi husnil ada. You should have advised me, Ya Rasulullah, pay your debts on time. Wa ta'muruhu bi husnil taba. All you could have done with regards to him instead of reaching for your sword and exhibiting your anger, what you should have done, Umar, is compassionately advised him to ask for repayment in a nice manner. Now, Omar, you threatened him by your outward demeanor. Go to the Baytul Mal, pay him back the 80 tons that is due to him and give him another 20 tons of dates in expiation, in exchange for the anger that you exhibited towards him. Omar goes with this person. Presents it to him. When he gives him the 20 tons more, this person asks, what are you doing? He says, Rasulullah Wasallam commanded me to give you the 20 tons more because I threatened you and I exhibited rage towards you. Allahu Akbar, this man says to Umar, do you know who I am? Umar says, no. He says, my name is Zaid bin Sona. Hearing the name straight away, Umar says, Hebrul Madina, you are the scholar of the Jews, the famous scholar of Madina. How could you behave like this? Allahu Akbar, what, he, what does he say? He says, مَا مِنْ عَلَامَاتِ النُّبُوَّةِ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا وَقَدْ عَرَفْتُهَا حِينَ نَذَرْتُ إِلَى وَجِ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِلَّا سْنَ إِلَّا إِلَّا شَيْءٍ لَمْ أُخْبِرْهُمَا He says, the moment I saw the face of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umar, I'm telling you, every sign of nubuwwat that were mentioned in the scriptures of Musa alayhi salam, I saw it on his face. But there were two things mentioned in our scriptures that you couldn't see that has to be tested. Inner beauty. Inner beauty. Uswatun hasana. Are you a beautiful human being? Listen to these two things. What is the two things? One, yasbiqu hilmuhu jahlahu. Yasbiqu hilmuhu jahlahu. The last prophet will be a personality who is such that his tolerance, his forbearance, his forgiveness will be greater than any ignorance that is exhibited towards him. وَلَا تَزِيدُهُ شِدَّةُ الْجَهْلِ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا حِلْمًا وَلَا تَزِيدُهُ شِدَّةُ الْجَهْلِ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا حِلْمًا And the more arrogantly, the more you behave with him, the more you behave with him, what will happen? Will he become more arrogant? Will he become more atrocious in his behavior? Will he hit out at you? Ask yourself this question. My mother Aisha radiallahu anha, when she described Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, she said, Man taqaman nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wasallam li nafsihi. It comes in the riwayat. La yaghdabu li nafsihi wa man tasara laha. You want to sort your relative out. You want to sort your enemy out. You want to sort so and so a person out, he didn't speak to you properly, he didn't treat you properly, he didn't smile at you properly. My respected brothers, the akhlaq of Islam is what? La takunu imma'a. Our akhlaq and character is not a reciprocal akhlaq and character. 
our clerk and character is smile at the one who shows you a sour face forgive the one who oppresses you do good to the one who does evil to you why because you have allah and his rasul sallallahu in front of you you have akhirat in front of you the latter part of that verse liman kana yarju allah wal yawm al akhirah for you in muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the most beautiful example for the one who believes in allah and akhirat keep allah and akhirat in front Keep the day when you want to get jam kosher from the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi in front of you. Swear at your wife, swear at your children, swear at your staff. Insult people, break down relations, give in, give in to this negativity and rage within you. My respected brothers, very easy when you don't keep your akhirat in front of you. When you don't keep the day, you have to stand in front of Allah in front of you. You are not just a husband or a father. You are not just a businessman or a lawyer. You are an ambassador of Islam. You are one who claims uswatun hasana. I am the ambassador and representative of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What was his akhlaq? What was his character? Aisha radhiyallahu anha wa mother what does she say? She says my nabi in his entire life never sought revenge from anyone. Never became angry for any wrong that was done to him. He became angry for Islam when Allah's commands were broken. But for himself, لا يغضب لنفسه. He never became angry. وَمَنْ تَصَرَ لَهَا and he never took revenge from anyone. Forgave, forgave, forgave. Overlook, let it go. How much negative baggage are you going to carry? He says, Omar. In the scriptures of Musa Ali Salam, I looked at his face. Everything was there. Two things have to be tested. These two. What? Yes, be kohi. I'm mentioning it again. I'm mentioning it again so that when the salt is not right or the supper is not on time, that's the time we have to start thinking about what was akhlaq. When our staff didn't turn up on time or things are not happening the way we want it to happen, think about this akhlaq. When you want to sit on that social media and run the next person down and fight with this person and sort that person out, think about this akhlaq. Yasbiqu hilmuhu jahlahu. Any ignorance displayed towards him, his forbearance. Hil. What is hil? They say forbearance. Forbearance. Allahu akbar. What beauty is this? If you look at diamonds. Kohenur is a very famous diamond. Alauddin Khilji in 1310 conquered one territory of Andhra Pradesh. When he entered the treasury, he saw this beautiful diamond. Inadvertently from his lips, Kohenur, mountain of light. He called it a mountain of light, Kohenur, 894 carats. In 1854, the English stole it and then took it and put it in the queen's uh, uh, the queen's crown. We know the history. I'm not going into the details. How did it become a diamond? It is said for billions of years, coal has pressure exhibited on it. How much pressure? Fifty thousand times the pressure of the surface temperature of the Earth is put on coal. Sixteen hundred degrees is the heat that eventually that wood and coal turns into a diamond. You want to become beautiful. You want to become a diamond. Bardash, bardash, tolerate. Tolerate for Allah's sake. Let it go for him. Take out this drive, this burning fire of sorting people out. This thing, ham bi to hai. I am somebody. That is not the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes, bi kuhil muhu jahlahu. He is. Tolerance, his bardash was greater than any ignorance, and the more you're ignorant, the more arrogant you become, the more tolerant, the more forgiving, the more compassionate he would become. Like I said, two incidents. I've already run out of time. Just going to complete this first incident. Nevertheless, Zaid bin Sana, he says these two things had to be tested. Now, Omar, now, Omar, I make you a witness. Radhi tu billahi rabba. وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ نَبِيًّا وَالشَّتْرُ مَالِي صَدَقَةً عَلَى أُمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Omar, I am making you a witness that I am happy with Allah as my Rabb, Islam as my Deen, and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as my Nabi. And Omar, I am making you a witness half my wealth I give in sadaqah and charity upon the Muslim Ummah. This akhlaq, 
this beauty uswatun hasana for you in the rasul of allah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the most beautiful example rabiul awwal sira jalsas are not there just for extolling praises it is there for you and i to make this determination that i want to become a beautiful human being not in the eyes of society that will automatically happen become beautiful in the eyes of allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam the whole world the whole world will be attracted towards your beauty because allah will give you that noor which will outshine the sun allah give us tawfeeq wa khidam allahu akbar allah